Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is a morning market prep video for February 7th, 2022. Doggone it, on Friday, we tried to get something going again, and then by the end of the day, we saw those sellers coming in, just that worry going into the weekend. And we have our future suggesting a little bit of a lower open this morning, but it has improved substantially over the morning. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Monday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. Let's take a look at these charts and see if we can gain some information about how we may want to approach the market for today. Now, certainly we have a battle going on between the bulls and the bears. We have a confirmed downtrend in the chart and we've got the bears working to defend this lower high in the chart. Well, at the same time, we have the bulls working as hard as they can to try and put in a higher low and give us some hope that there may be an upside rally coming soon. So we'll kind of want to keep a close eye on this. Remember, as we push up into this downtrend, we could certainly see those failure patterns continue to occur. Um, remember, there's really nothing different about this rally to resistance as any of the others. So watch that carefully. And we do have those uncertainties out there this week with um, that possible invasion of Ukraine. And then later on this week, we're going to have some inflationary data that may actually move a little bit higher. And then remember, we've got that hawkish FOMC uh, just around the corner where they're likely to raise rates. And the concern uh, uh, might be because of that high jobs number, that possibility has been raised that we could see a half a basis point increase rather than just a quarter basis point. So we have all those uncertainties out here working on us as well. And whether or not um, these bulls can fight hard enough to push through that, that bearish level, we'll have to wait and see. Now you'll want to also keep in mind that even as we continue to push back up, we are still below our 50 day moving average. That 50 day moving average has come down pretty dramatically and flattened out and our shorter term averages are all lined up there. So not only do we have a price resistance level, we have a technical resistance level that's creating this zone right in here that may require something special to push us through there. So we'll want to watch that closely. We did hold on to the 200 day moving average on Friday, but let's keep in mind, we could easily test the overnight lows in the futures, which would mean a possible failure at that 50 and see whether or not those bears pile on this morning after the open to retest that low. Um, who knows, but watch that closely. And then let's take a look at that SPY, SPY. SPY is a very similar situation. We are continuing to confirm our downtrend. We've got the bears working to defend this area, which is, as you can see, a fairly significant price resistance level in the chart. And we have the bulls working as hard as they possibly can to try and put in a higher low and give us hope that a relief rally can continue. Now, we do have a little bit of a support level there that we're continuing to hover above. So watch carefully in there as we try to battle this out and determine which way we are going to go in the market. Now, let's also keep in mind that we are below our 50-day moving average, and that 50-day moving average has certainly declined. Our shorter-term averages have crossed down, so we are creating a fairly substantial zone of resistance here in the chart, both price-wise and technical-wise, but it is a good sign that we held above the 200-day moving average in that chart. If we were to get some bearish activity in here and fail below that um, that area. What we want to see is we want to see this little area hold. If that area doesn't hold, then of course we're probably looking for a retest of these lows. So fingers crossed that we can hold in there if you're a bull. If you're a bear, certainly you want to see that break down. Now let's take a look at our 
um, QQQ. Now QQQ is really in a precarious position here. We have seen just enough of, of a mix in those earnings reports to keep the QQQ um, uh, on edge here and as you can see we're continuing in this downtrend and we have significant resistance levels in price above and by the way that extends all the way over here as you can see we've got quite a little bit of resistance in that chart to challenge us on the way back up so we have that downtrend in play if we can rally back up into this resistance, it's, it's really going to take something special to maybe push us through. Will we get enough activity in um, the earnings reports? And you know, the bulk of those big earnings or market moving earnings report have ports have kind of gone past us. So will we get enough in those earnings reports to really push us higher? Or will we maybe even come in down in here and test this little support in that area of the chart if those bears engage? And let's keep in mind, if they push down through that level, well, then there's a high probability we test this. And notice that underneath this in the QQQ, there's just not a whole lot of price support underneath that area for a ways. So we have to push all the way back down into here maybe to catch some of those levels. So watch that closely. And then let's take a look at those moving averages and just realize that our moving averages continue to, to decline here. The 50 is still falling here in the chart. Our short-term moving averages, as you can see, this uh, yellow is a 20-day um, simple moving average. Our 20-day simple and our 34 exponential moving average are pushing down toward that 200 day and that possibility that we're creating that um, huge resistance zone here in that chart that we're gonna have to get some kind of nice bullish move to push us up through that area because I would suspect the bears will be working pretty hard to defend that area and then if we take a look at our Russell well you know, our Russell is just really, really sick. And that's the only way you can really describe it. We are in a awfully um, bearish downtrend here in the chart, having broken nearly a year's worth of price support in that chart that is now resistance. And notice right in here, we really don't have a whole lot of price support under this. If we were to break down below that low right there, I think we could move down sharply, in fact, all the way down into the 160s to find that next level of price support right in here. I'm um, actually just a little bit higher, right in that area right there, 162, 163 area, and possibly just a tiny little bit higher around that 167, 168 area in the chart. So watch that carefully. IWM is not a healthy looking chart. Um, let's take a look at our moving averages on this and note that our 50 has already crossed down through the 200 and we're creating a pretty substantial zone of resistance right underneath this area here um, with that price. So that could be problematic here for the Russell. Let's take a look at our VIX. Now our VIX, uh, we spiked up a little bit on Friday and then by the end of the day uh, pulled back a little bit on that but unfortunately we're holding in here on this little upside trend. And it's nice that the fear has dropped off a little bit here. It's helping option prices calm down a little bit. But we still are holding pretty substantial levels here in this chart and holding that uptrend. So the question is going to become is in this bull and bear battle to try and win direction here, which one takes off and wins here at this moment? Obviously, if you're a bull, you want to see you want to see this trend breaking down in here, that support breaking down and see that failing underneath here. If you are a bear, you certainly want to see that hold in this area and see those bears trying to fight for more downside in the market. Now, I got to tell you, it's kind of... Uh, it's kind of 50 50 here it looks like to me we're holding in support pretty substantial support area and there's just a lot of uncertainty in the market then if we take a look at our um, t 
T2122. T2122 also leaves us with a little bit of uncertainty. Notice that we did push back here on Friday just a bit, but we haven't quite reached that bullish reversal zone. Doesn't mean that we have to, but we haven't quite reached that zone. So what that means is if we find reason for bearishness, then we could certainly we certainly have room to move to the downside. If we find reason for bullishness, we certainly have plenty of upside room to the upside to get moving if those bulls can grab onto something in the market here bullish. So watch that closely. Unfortunately, we just can't say that we are in a short term oversold condition. So we'd have that little bit more confidence of a rally. As a matter of fact, with the futures having bounced off of their lows, I wouldn't want to, um, to um, be the guy suggesting that we couldn't retest those lows this morning. Keeping in mind, we've seen that several times here recently where we pop up in the pre-market and then we immediately catch those sellers and push down and retest the lows of the day um, or the overnight. So watch that carefully. And then if we take a look at our T2108, now T2108 did show a little bit of an improvement on Friday, but I got to tell you, not enough to really um, give you a whole lot of warm and fuzzy feeling in there. As you can see, we still have significant price resistance throughout this chart above. We continue in a downtrend and just right there, only about 25% of our stocks holding above their 40 day. Our T2107, oops, our T2107 also just didn't have a whole lot of luck here on Friday and continued to move just a little bit lower. So we still have an awful lot of price pressure here in the T2107. There is a price resistance level, as you can see right through there, and of course through here, and our downtrend continues. So not exactly um, that big encouragement that we're gonna see a huge surge to the upside just yet. Um, only 28, 29% of our stocks holding above the 200 day moving average. So pretty darn bearish here in that look. And then our T2101, our absolute market breadth, did pull back a little bit. So that kind of supported the fact that we had a little bit of rally there on Friday, but it's awfully mixed and we're continuing to hold um, the support levels in the chart. So once again, if you're a bull, you want to see that T2101 kind of decline and push down in here. That uh, momentum of uh, seems, uh, well, absolute market breadth is, is the direction beyond momentum. It, it doesn't take that momentum into account. So if we were to drift down in here, I think that would be bullish for the market. If, if you are a bear, you want to see this starting to spike back up because that's where real selling could begin. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. But you know, guys, before we do that, I want to make um, uh, make another uh, point here in the market. I know even with all the selling that we've seen in the market, everyone probably feels like, oh my gosh, we're so sold off. We've got to get some bullish things going here in the market. But I want to point out valuations once again. Valuations are important. And although we ignored them for quite some time here um, over last year, setting like 70 new record highs in the NASDAQ last year, if you take a look here on our S&P 500 PE ratio, notice that we, even with the selling, we are still 82% above the historical average in our price valuations of stocks. So you'll want to keep that in mind. We are still, um, our PE ratios are still extremely elevated. So that does put us in that really odd situation where we want to see that bullish rally, but if these earnings continue to come out in such a hit and miss fashion, I want to suggest to you that although we're trying to push back up, we could have a real challenging spring and summer this year if those rising um, interest rates start to slow the economy as they're supposed to do. That could be a little bit of a problem with evaluate with stock valuations still so high overall. Let's take a look at um, this economic calendar uh, for today. We have a really light economic calendar for today. Really nothing in here to move us around all that much. So keep an eye on it, but 
probably nothing in here that's going to create volatility. Um, as we move through the week, we got international trading goods, petroleum status, and I get I think Thursday is going to be the big day for us on the calendar here. That's when we get that CPI number. Remember, every time oil continues to move higher, it puts pressure, upside pressure, on consumer prices. And there may be that possibility that we could see our CPI go above seven point or 7.0 um, if that oil continues to surge in the market. So watch that close. Um, we're lucky that we don't have a PPI number here this week as well. It looks like they've slipped that to next week. And then, of course, jobless claims and consumer sentiment. And this could be interesting um, as those claims um, showed a huge improvement oh, on Friday over the ADP and actually puts more pressure on the Fed to act. So watch that close. Then let's take a look at our earnings calendar. Now, our earnings calendar, we have um, a relatively busy day. We have about 70 companies, 80 companies in there on the list today. Um, just short of just, well, just a little over 70, just under 80 on the day. Um, one of the things that you're going to want to pay attention to, the big market mover reports have kind of past us now. So um, it's going to be interesting to see how these earnings continue to roll out. Will they continue to support the bulls? Or will they support the bears? Um, and we've been so hit and miss on this earnings. Um, you know, I think anything is possible. So some of those notables for today, um, take a look, Amgen will be one of those today. We'll want to pay attention to this biotech. As you can see, been pushing in a little bit of a lower high downtrend, a little bit of a head and shoulders pattern as you can see setting up here on this chart but earnings can change everything and if it can hold that level in here and get a good earnings report we certainly could pop up but if that were to fail in here that could be a critical failure for Amgen take a look at um, like ACM ACM reporting today another lower high in this chart this will be an important report obviously not in a bullish pattern um, in, in the short term here on that chart, but maybe earnings could change that. If not, and it breaks this level of support, that could be a critical failure here for ACM. We're also getting here from Hasbro. Hasbro will be reporting. Looks like they've already reported here this morning, a nice bullish move. Now, obviously we've got a lot of resistance above that could restrict that chart from moving up hard, but take a look. We've got that downtrend here in play. Whoops, I didn't draw that arrow very straight there. Um, um, as you can see, um, a lot of resistance up here, but Hasbro showing some bullishness here this morning. We're going to hear from um, um, Leg and Platt, and you can see that's been moving in a downtrend. We've got Rambus on the calendar here for this afternoon. Um, we'll want to be paying attention to Rambus. It is in a downtrend. TTWO. Um, we'll also be reporting here today. Keep that one in mind as we watch this take two, um, pushing in a downtrend here, but pushing that resistance level in the chart. See if it has that opportunity to press on through that in the chart. And then um, Tyson. Tyson will be another one that'll be interesting today. And you can see it is spiking up here in the pre-market. Looks like it had a bullish report. It's been moving up in this nice bullish trend. And again, we see food and energy prices continuing to put pressure on the market pushing 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 and Tyson looks like it could be heading out trying to test some new highs in the market so if you want to catch the full list of reports today make sure you click that link just below the title of the video that'll take you back to the morning blog and you can get the full list of notables for today let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up for today but before we do that guys if you could do me a quick favor if this is the first time you've seen these videos if you could please click that subscribe button on youtube and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time i vote post a video and if you feel these videos are worthy and helpful if you could please click that thumbs up button leave that brief comment helps the channel to continue to grow i just want to say thank you to everyone who does take the time to do that you guys are awesome i truly appreciate it keep in mind those folks that have been um, helping the channel out with the buy me a coffee link i'm getting closer and closer to start doing some live 
events on YouTube. There'll be some training events. There'll be um, just some conversation, qu answering question events. So keep an eye on those. I'll put a notification out when I've got one of those coming up. So everyone, um, watch for those. And thank you so much for being here today. Let's take a look at a few of these stocks. And remember, guys, these stocks are not a recommendation to buy or sell any security. As a matter of fact, you should be very, very careful and cautious in the volatility of this market. And remember, if Russia invades Ukraine, all bets are off. Anything is possible. Look for wild volatility and who knows how the market will actually react to that. Let's take a look right in here. Let's take a look at uh, BMY. Um, Bristol Myers looking pretty good here. And as you can see, got past its earnings here in the chart and held up pretty well. I've been keeping a close eye on this and you guys know I've talked about this one several times. Pushing up little higher lows. We've got a resistance in here trying to break through. Keep an eye on that. If Bristol Myers can complete this little wedging pattern or push on through, there may be some opportunity coming here in BMY. Keep a close eye on it. Um, BBBY, um, Bed Bath & Beyond. Interesting little pattern here. Notice we've got quite a little downtrend going on in the chart. But the thing that I kind of like about this is that it is showing some bullishness here. Past its earnings event, as you can see in here, pushing up, we've got this um, little hooking pattern, we call that a J hook pattern, right off of the trend line. So if that can get moving in here, there may be a little bit of upside potential. And we've been seeing some retail stocks showing some strength. So it might be an interesting one to keep an eye on and put it on your list. I'm going to continue to mention VMware. VMware continues to look good. And I'll tell you, one of the things I love about this chart over a lot of them right now is the consistency in the price action. Notice that the volatility of the market has not affected this rally here in VMW. Just nice and steady to the upside. So keep an eye on that. Now we certainly do have a resistance level right here to be thinking about. But if we can push on through there, we've got that opportunity to fill this gap. I think there is a pretty good possibility that could occur. So keep an eye on that. You will want to make note it's going to report on the 24th. So um, watch that carefully. Um, also, let's take a look at VALE. This one continues to perform. As you guys know, I've talked about this one multiple times. My first alert on this was down in here. And as you can see, that chart continues to perform in this upside trend. We continue to break through these resistance levels. I would watch that closely. Now, one of the things I always want to see is that we return and we respond to support levels and we respond to trends. So a little bit of rest back in here and I would be watching for that next opportunity to the upside here in VALE. Take a look um, at uh, Macy's here. Now Macy's has got one of those charts where we have that potential we could go either direction in here. And I do think we have to have that idea here in the market to take on maybe some long trades and some short trades to balance the volatility of this market. Take a look here. We've been moving in this downtrend here and we're rallying back up to this resistance or we're consolidating, I should say, right under it. I would be watching this for that potential failure underneath that level. And I gotta say, there's quite a few of those right now, guys. We have Home Depot. Um, if you guys remember, I was calling Home Depot as a potential short right in here. And that certainly has played out, although it hasn't broken all the way down. But certainly there's nothing bullish about this chart yet. But we will wanna be really careful here with Home Depot because it could be influenced by lows. Um, and lows, um, um, I'm not sure. Well, maybe maybe they've moved their report. I was thinking Lowe's was earlier this week, so it might be my mistake. But watch that carefully in here. Lowe's also showing that potential failure pattern. And I think we may be seeing a little bit of concern in that housing industry. So if you're looking for some short trades, you might want to look at some of those housing, um, housing areas. Um, 
of the market for some potential short trades because I think we could be seeing a slowing there in that environment. So watch those closely. Um, last but not least, just a couple of these defensive sector stocks continue to hold up. Now, Coke's been pretty volatile, bouncing around here, but let's notice we've broken through this resistance here in the chart, and so far we're still holding on to that area. So defensive sector stocks have had kind of mixed results here recently. Um, um, that rotation, we've had some of those selling back off uh, from the from the sell-off in the market. But watch this carefully. Coke holding up pretty well. I think PepsiCo is a little bit on the questionable side here yet. But um, I see some stocks starting to push back pretty strongly in that sector. Uh, one being uh, Philip Morris hanging in there very nice on this support level and I kind of like this chart in Mo even though we're holding against a resistance in this chart and the reason I kind of like it is this weekly and noticing that we've broken this longer downtrend here in the chart and we're trying to hold that area as support so if that can hold in here I would be watching for that opportunity for that longer term to maybe push on through there look at this is a big downtrend break so we get through that resistance there might be some nice upside in Mo. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. This video is running a little bit long, so I'm going to cut this short. Be safe. Have an awesome day, and I will see you right back here bright and early Tuesday morning. Wish you all the best, everyone.